Anyway, thank you very much for your introduction. Um, I am delighted to uh, be with you all this morning. Um, it's, uh, it's, it's very nice for me to be back in Salford. I actually started my political career here. Um, I was the candidate for the Conservative candidate in Eccles in 1997. Um, not exactly the launch pad of my political career. Um, as as uh, someone said, you know, uh, Greg for Eccles and Eccles won. Um, uh, but uh, it did leave me with uh, an enduring, um, an enduring um, uh, interest and, uh, and, and like for this area. And it was a fascinating insight for me, of someone that uh, now represents a, a seat down in, uh, in East Sussex to know a bit more um, about the North West and uh, Salford and Manchester in, in, in particular. So I'm very glad uh, to be back here again, and particularly um, at the Salford University Energy Hub, which really is doing some extraordinarily exciting and also very important work. And uh, I'm looking forward to seeing the Energy House a little bit later. But if I have one key message for you this morning, and I really want to talk quite briefly so I can get on and answer some of your questions, but if I really have one key message for you, it is to emphasise the sheer scale of the ambition of the task of retrofitting the UK housing stock, the size of the challenge that we face, but to really tell you that the coalition is absolutely committed to this task. Um, our ambition is to go further than any other UK, uh, European country has done to date. And we are putting in place the framework and the long-term delivery structure to allow this revolution in energy efficiency to really take hold, grow, and complete the task within over the next decade. It is fundamental to our pledge to be the greenest government ever. We cannot hope to fulfil that ambition if we don't really do something about the UK housing stock. Although there has been good progress made over the last uh, few years, particularly in the last 10 years, the fact of the matter remains we are still near the bottom of the U European League for energy efficiency and it needs to be gripped. Um, and we need to change the level and scale and pace of delivery. And that is what the Green Deal um, is all about. The Green Deal, the government's uh, flagship energy policy that brings together um, these new strands, brings together the new delivery mechanism for energy efficiency. Currently going through the uh, House of Lords at the moment, it will reach the House of Commons um, shortly. Um, it will pass into law, um, at, uh, we hope, by the summer, and then there'll be secondary legislation to bring forward the, um, the certification and the standards that will be absolutely imperative um, to have in place in order to uh, allow the Green Deal itself to start being rolled out across the country in the second half of 2012. But we really see the Green Deal as a game changer. And it is a fundamental break with some of these stop-start, short-term programmes that we've seen before, which in themselves have um, delivered uh, in the areas that they've been uh, um, used in, but have not really been on the scale that is commensurate with the size of the challenge. It's been piecemeal, it's been short-term, um, it's been discreet, it's been capped funding, um, it's been either wholly public sector or, or individual community projects. The Green Deal is really about creating a national movement almost um, that will take forward the retrofit um, case. I and mean, if you look at the size of the challenge, it's easy to see why these smaller programmes in the past haven't been capable of really making the change we need to see. We've got 26 million households in the UK and we reckon that we need to do at least 14 million of those over the next decade in order to meet our um, emissions targets. Um, but it's not just about carbon emissions. Maybe that's where we've begun, maybe that's where we'll need to end in terms of the imperative of doing something about climate change. 
but it's also about improving the quality of life for millions of people. It's about really addressing the root causes of fuel poverty, and which basically means making Britain's homes more efficient and cheaper to run. Um, it is extraordinary that the average British home costs more to heat and light than the average home in Norway, where half the country is in the Arctic Circle. And there's been lots of um, anger and concern, quite rightly, about rising costs in energy over the last couple of years. But the fact of the matter is, our homes are the most expensive to heat, not because we have the high unit costs of energy in the UK, in Europe, but because we are, have such inefficient, drafty, cold, leaky housing. And that has to change. Currently reckon it's wasting about £6 billion a year. And in these tough times, we can't afford that sort of waste. We have to, we have to become far, far more efficient. So the Green Deal is going to be um, a huge, um, a huge game, uh, game changer. And the way we're going to um, do this is to bring in the private sector. It really is about unlocking billions of pounds in private sector investment to, uh, to take the lead. And that's why, where the Green Deal regulation that allows you to attach finance to, uh, to the bill of a property, regardless of the status of whoever lives in that property, so whether you're a student or a pensioner, a family or a high income earner, all of, everyone will be entitled to the similar benefits, a similar finance, providing it meets the golden rule. The golden rule that means that the savings created by the, by, by the energy efficiency always have to be greater than the costs of paying for those, in, um, paying for those interventions over 25 years. Now, that simple, um, that simple ratio covers a huge number of interventions, but there will also be many homes that won't be covered by a pay-as-you-save model. Um, those that are you know, hard to treat solid wool, for example, or those of the, the most fuel poor, because you can't make savings on your energy bill if you're not actually paying it in the first place. And we recognise that. That's why, as in addition to this new pay-as-you-save uh, regulated model, uh, will also be a uh, ongoing, um, what we're calling the, the ECHO, the, uh, the uh, new obligation, the new energy obligation on the utility companies, which we believe will be worth well in excess of a billion pounds per annum and will be um, rolled out over a decade. So again, none of this stop-start that you've seen with CERT and then CERT extensions. We'll be make, sending very clear long-term <coughs> signals to industry that they can invest with real confidence. And so it's creating that framework for investment, creating the structure that, uh, and the financing model, and alongside that, the clear long-term uh, subsidy for the hard-to-treat homes that will, that will create this new market um, and will ensure that we are able to fulfil our ambitions to completely um, uh, retrofit the UK housing stock. Um, and what that means is a huge opportunity for industry. Um, we already see that on the, cons on the consumer facing side a great deal of interest from people wanting to provide um, this, op this service, um, these products to the householder. So in addition to the, the big six utilities, I've, I've had meetings with the likes of Tesco, with Sainsbury's, with B&Q, with Marks and Spencers, other companies who um, large and small, who excel at providing a good consumer experience, um, understand the needs of customers and want to develop that relationship. But it's not just going to be about the big companies, the FTSE companies that want to come in to this market. There's also going to be huge opportunity for smaller companies, for SMEs at the local level, local level, particularly as delivery partners working in conjunction with local authorities who are going to be absolutely critical to the rollout of the Green Deal, working up their strategic plans for each local area. So there's going to be a lot of new entrants, a lot of raised expectation, a lot of raised anim, uh, ambition. But underneath it all is also a real need for innovation, which is where places like Salford are so absolutely key. 
because the range of products that we see at the moment you know, have to be improved. We need to see them respond to the consumer much more effectively. They not only have to um, become cheaper and more affordable so that they meet the golden rule and can be uh, retrofitted uh, more extensively um, and still provide cheaper bills for people, but they also, you know, visual amenity is also incredibly important. They've got to be easy to use. They've got to be customer friendly. Um, they've got to make sure that where, for example, we're putting on hard, hard wall insulation, that we're not dramatically reducing the footprint of the, of, the, of the house and the available space for the people that live there. We've got to find products, drive innovation, drive research, drive development that actually is going to create the products that the consumers, householders will want to have in their homes and break down many of the um, quite mundane barriers that are never, nevertheless very, very real reasons why people at the moment step back or step away from making, doing the retrofit that makes a good deal of economic sense. So innovation, research, development are as much a part or will be much a part of the success of the Green Deal as the sort of very customer-facing new entry of, uh, <coughs> of firms like Marks & Spencer's. So it's a real partnership with government standing behind the whole sector, government recognising its responsibility to frame and drive forward this agenda, and I hope working in partnership with all of you from all the different um, um, aspects of the industry that you come from um, in making sure that we really meet this very, very ambitious long-term target. Thank you. Yeah, yeah.